Hello and welcome. We start with Nigeria. For days now, we have been telling you about the ongoing youth-led demonstrations in East Africa. From Kenya to Uganda, anti-government rallies have picked up pace in the region. They have also turned violent in Kenya, killing at least 50 people. But the Gen Z-led rallies are transcending boundaries. From East to West Africa, youngsters have been inspired and want to bring a change in their country. The Nigerian youth is now planning to carry out similar anti-government rallies. Many Nigerians are frustrated over the country's economic woes. They have taken to social media to mobilize protests from the 1st of August. The planned protests are dubbed End Bad Governance in Nigeria. They have a slew of demands from tackling the cost of living crisis to offer free education, end insecurity and disclose lawmakers' pay, among several others. But authorities in Nigeria are anxious. They fear the impending rallies and if the situation will turn violent. Rushing to quell anger, they went into a huddle and security authorities in Nigeria held an emergency meeting on Wednesday to discuss a way to avoid the protests. Several officials, including 14 ministers, reportedly attended the meeting. As per reports, after the meeting, all federal ministers were directed to visit their respective states before the protests begin next week. While the government has pleaded for more time and patience to end economic hardships. Earlier, President Bolo Tinubu warned the youth against joining the protests. He said that the planned protests are the work of sinister people capitalizing on the country's economic woes. Nigeria's police chief had also warned against Kenyan-style protests. Nigeria, which is Africa's most populous country and a major economy, is grappling with a very high inflation of over 34 percent, while the food inflation is over 40 percent. The cost of living spiked after Tinubu ended a costly fuel subsidy and eased foreign exchange controls after he took charge in May of last year. Amidst the calls for rallies, Nigeria's National Assembly on Tuesday passed a bill to more than double the minimum wage for federal workers. The monthly minimum wage is now set to rise from 30,000 to 70,000 naira, or around $43. So the Nigerian government has already started to consider concessions and is buying time for more. As per reports, the Nigerian president has been urged to address the nation and acknowledge public grievances. But will he be able to gain the public trust in a week's time? To discuss further, we are being joined by Ambrose Igboke, a PhD and global affairs analyst. Ambrose joins us live from Enugu in Nigeria. Thank you for being with us, Ambrose. Thank you, Alison, for having me. Good afternoon. Now, we have seen protests in Kenya, Uganda, and now it seems that Nigeria is the next African country planning protests. Why are there growing calls for President Tinubu's resignation? And what economic challenges have fueled these protests? Uh, um, well, the protest that has been touted in Nigeria uh, has not uh, and is not calling for President Tinubu's resignation. I think that was uh, what is happening in Kenya. For Nigerians, mostly, the, pro the, the protest is aimed at, you know, reversing the awkward economic policies of the president's administration, about reversing the hyperinflation in the country, about reversing the unemployment rates, about reversing the insecurity in the land, and these are the fulcrums and the main objectives of the uh, uh, planned protest by the protesters. You understand that in the last uh, uh, 15 months uh, since uh, the president took over, there have been multidimensional poverty has increased in Nigeria. Uh, we have had hyperinflation uh, occasioned by a removal of the first subsidy and the floating of the Naira against uh, the dollar. Uh, because Nigeria has failed, uh, to make its refineries work. And basically, that is the work of government, to make the refineries work that was built by public money 
uh, for the past 30 years, the refineries have refused to work. All the turnaround maintenances that were, you know, monies were, you know, budgeted for billions for uh, turnaround maintenances of the four refineries in Nigeria, none was working. Nigeria is basically the only uh, organized petroleum and exporting countries, OPEC nations, that, you know, uh, exports crude is own for its own consumption, exports crude, refines the product outside the country with, uh, with a dollar-denominated amount, mm. and bring it back again using dollars, and then expect to sell it in Naira. Nigeria is the only OPEC country that basically does not refine its own domestic uh, petroleum consumption in their country. And so it's an economic absurdity that mm. a country takes its own petroleum product out and brings it in refined. So that makes the cost skyrocket. So uh, the government knew that they have failed in refining product locally. They now introduced the subsidy, which was supposed to bring down the cost of uh, pricing, where you make it at par with international pricing. But when you now remove it, what government now did was to remove the subsidy without actually putting those refineries in the working conditions. And what we are now telling Nigerians is to buy petroleum products at the price of international markets. For an oil-producing nation, that is mm. not an uh, economic uh, you know, path. Because we are supposed to enjoy the advantages of an oil-producing nation. We cannot be buying petroleum at the cost of what others who are not producing petroleum are, are buying. So Nigerians have seen that the, the first subsidy in mm. the first place the subsidy was not a problem. It was the fraud in the subsidy. So what the government ought to have done was to ensure that they remove the fraud in the subsidy because uh, the subsidy itself is a failure of government to make the refineries work. So it's not the Nigerian citizen that will suffer for the inefficiency of government in that regard. And mm. that is why things have skyrocketed in the last 15 right. months. Right. Uh, we barely, when the, at the time the government entered, we are buying fuel for 165 naira per liter of uh, PMS. And then it, uh, by July last year, we are buying for 600. Uh, I calculate the uh, inflation rate. Uh, that was too, mm. uh, too much. Uh, for a country right. that lacks power, uh, electricity power that depends mostly on diesel and the uh, petrol, yes. uh, it, it was a big right. thing for us and it's really biting hard economically. Right. Let, let me interrupt you there. What, what are these, let's take a look at these key demands of the planned protests in terms of how they relate to issues like security concerns, transparency in governance and accountability. Well, the, the issue of insecurity has started by uh, when, uh, you know, the ISWAP and some other, uh, you know, insurgent groups uh, gathered at, uh, uh, from the part of Niger, Chad, and, uh, and infiltrated uh, Nigeria from the north of Nigeria. And uh, because of that, it, it was contained in the north before, but it has spread throughout the country where they now, you know, enter farmlands, you know, sack communities, kill people. There's a killing spree every every time. And because of that, uh, the, the economic activities, especially crop production, has greatly reduced in Nigeria. People are not able to go to their farms again because of fear of being mm. uh, massacred, uh, being killed in their farms. And that has also, you know, encroached in the food uh, uh, production. And now we are having debt of food crisis going, go, food crisis problem, uh, uh, you know, come up because of the issues of insecurity. Uh, farmers are no, can no longer access their farms. And this has caused a lot. Kidnappings are still on uh, in, in the land. And so these are the key demands also that Nigerians need to be safe. Uh, Nigerians need to, you know, Go to sleep with their two eyes uh, closed. But right now, uh, people are agitated. People mm. are afraid. People are hungry. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, mm. you know discontent in the land, and that is one of the key areas that the state government should look into. Right. So far, these areas mm. subsist, and that is the problem. One of one of some of the major problems. When you talk of uh, transparency in governance, the, we have what they call the Freedom of Information uh, right. uh, Act or law in Nigeria. Uh, that is just like a window dressing. Nothing is happening. Uh, you need to apply uh, for you to get information. Before you get the information, it is so hard. Jour journalists find it difficult to access. Uh, since that's supposed to be public information, uh, our lawmakers, we don't know how much is the allowances. We don't know how much mm. they're earning. A lot of things are still shrouded in secrecy. Uh, there's an opaque nature. People still take uh, uh, oath 
uh, uh, in governance, not to reveal secret service, uh, secret act oath, and all those things. Laws that are not in tandem with 21st century uh, movement. Mm -hmm. These are the things that ought to go. We need to know. In fact, it needs to be published uh, uh, in the website of government what each person is earning, so now we can know. As we, as I speak, I don't know what the lawmakers are, uh, are earning in mm -hmm. allowances, and and then when you try to uh, find out, you meet a brick wall. And that is one of the problems. It, 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 there's no it, uh, transparency right. is a big issue in governance in the country. Right, absolutely. And Amber, is that we have seen some concessions from the government in Nigeria in terms of um, the youth, citizens' willingness, especially among the youth, to participate in these protests. What measures are being taken to ensure safety during the demonstrations? Mm -hmm. Uh, in Nigeria's constitution and in the democracy practice in Nigeria, a protest is one of the legitimate means by which citizens can, you know, uh, ventilate their uh, discontent with government. And that is taken, uh, that is given in the Nigerian constitution. Uh, but in, in, in the past, what we have had was that when protests take place, some uh, fifth columnists infiltrate the protesters and try to make it a riot. And that is one of the biggest problems. So instead of Nigerian government saying that people should not protest, how else do you want people to ventilate their uh, their anger? How else do you want people to ventilate their frustrations and discontent? So uh, instead of government saying, do not protest, right. the government should be saying, how do we protect protesters? I think that should be the dialogue and the narration narrative, not do not protest. If it, uh, there's a proverb in Africa that I don't beat a child and tell a child not to cry. So the people are already crying. The people are angry. The people are, you know, are frustrated. And the only way they are seeing in a democratic setting is for the protest. Mm. So the security agency should uh, try to ensure right. that whatever protest that may take place should be within the ambit of the law. Should be, uh, you know, uh, there should be yes. adequate security to ensure that fifth columnists who are trying to use the uh, protest as a way of uh, causing uh, disquiet in the land are not allowed to use it. But they have to make sure that the protesters are properly right. you know, protected. And that is where a modern democracy uh, is right. done. Because even those in government today were beneficiaries of protest. The president himself was, uh, you know, was a well-known protester uh, in the days of uh, Abacha uh, time in the 90s. And even recently, uh, some, uh, some 15 years ago, when they protested against uh, uh, yes. uh, you know, the yes. government of Jonathan, when they wanted to remove fresh subsidy. So protests are mm. well known. Nigerians are well known for protests. They are protesting against the military regime. They are protesting. They have been protesting. So it's not a new thing in Nigeria. But we are saying that the government, right. I don't know what the government mm -hmm. is afraid of, but the government should come out to ensure that the you know, protest right. activity is protected rather than telling people not to protest. Absolutely. Ambrose, thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa. Thank you very much, Alison, for having me. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree. A News 18 Network initiative. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished.
Hello and welcome to First Call America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C.